Welcome back to the channel. It's time to talk about all the best comic books you could buy this week. And here with me, as always, is Drew from Comics Lead. How you doing, Drew? Doing great, Wes. Voice is a lot better. The cough, whatever's gone. Getting ready for New York Comic Con. Born of Blood 1 came out this week. It's got a great response. I am firing on all cylinders. Let's talk about some great comics. Well, let's talk about our featured comic book first. We're going to talk about Detective Comics 1064, Ray V, Raphael Albuquerque. It is more of a slow burn, kind of what Ray V is known for. But if you're looking for a different take on Batman, I think a lot of people could like this. It's certainly changing some history about Gotham and Batman. But we kind of see that within a lot of Batman stories these days. Yeah, and I'm very curious to see, because there's a plot point in this that involves uh, Bruce going to the doctor. It's a lot like Dark Knight Rises. The doctor tells him he may be uh, having panic attacks. It's, it's, That's it's, an issue I have with the story, because we've literally seen Bruce Wayne for years upon years. He can control his heart rate. If mm -hmm. he needs to conserve oxygen when he's underwater, he can do it. Or if he needs to pretend he's dead, he can do it. <laughs> yeah. it. It doesn't make a lot of sense. But yeah, he's he's building upon lore from the past with different familial el el family elements, tying in the Arkhams into another family, this old family that's coming back to Gotham. He tells an allegory of Bruce and Talia to like an, an ancient opera, I guess, that happened. It's good, but like you said, it's a very slow burn compared to what we're going to get in Batman. But um, it's, it's good for, from what we've gotten. I'll say that. Yeah, I wish it was a little bit more fast-paced. This week, we do get to see Batman and Talia al Ghul get together once again. And it's clear she's not telling something to Batman. She's there to occupy his time. They have a little bit of a battle. Although, she does try to kind of kill him when she explodes a bomb right underneath him. So, maybe she's not being all that friendly. We find out the reason that she's slowing him down is because this family, apparently this royal family from obviously a made-up country, is arriving in Gotham. They talk about there's ties between the Oregon royal family and Arkham as well, and they're arriving on the docks, and you can see the League of Shadows are planning an attack, and that's why she was occupying Bruce, because she didn't want to see him interfere and stop this attack that's going to happen. But the Orgums, who apparently might be werewolves, I think that's what they are, are aware of this, and we're going to see a big battle scene probably next week. Yeah, hopefully we do. Hopefully we do get a big battle scene, because I think we've earned it, earned it at this point for a Batman book. He does slow burns. You know, sometimes it works, with like I think with Swamp Thing, other times it doesn't really work out so well. I, I'm hoping he pays he pays it off eventually because what he's I do like what he's doing with the Arkham's in this old family. That's that's a pretty cool idea. Let's bring them in. Let's see if they can change things around with the Arkham and hopefully they don't they don't build a, an asylum in the middle of Gotham. <laughs> in the art by Raphael Albuquerque, he absolutely fits what Ramby is doing with Batman and the story that he's telling. We're still early. I believe this is the third issue of Ramby's Detective Comics run. So we can't make any definitive decisions yet, but I do recommend it, especially if you're looking for an alternative, maybe a little bit different take on Batman that's, I don't know, a little bit more pretentious. That might be the word. <laughs> it's more operatic. Oh, so there we go, yeah. <laughs> it's definitely a more operatic take than you're going to get from Chip Zdarsky on the main Batman title. So definitely check that one out if you're looking for something different. But be warned, it is a slow burn. You are not going to get like a story in a comic book. It's clearly that he's writing for the trades on this one. And it is decompressed storytelling. Let's go to something that isn't decompressed. On the indie comic scene, this actually came out last week. I missed it. Barbaric Axe to Grind number two from Vault Comics. Michael Morici, Nathan Gooden on art. We're starting to get some of the backstory of Owen, who's this insane barbarian that has a bloodthirsty axe. And we're finding out why he's got this blood feud with this character that was kind of introduced recently. Lots of interesting stuff going on there. They might have over explained a little bit, but the art is very good and it's still really fun. It, this was just bloody and violent, and yeah, like you said, uh, we get the clear image of what this group was like with Steel and Owen back in the day. And that was pretty cool. And we get to see that encounter with the powerful ent entity and what the entity did to them. And uh, yeah, it's very interesting, it, building upon these characters, giving them new dimensions and angles. I like that. It's interesting seeing the postmodern takes with some of these characters, you know, it because it clearly, I mean, they're like He-Man and Conan allegories. It's a it's a different take on it, and it, it's done in a good way, I'll say that, where it's not deconstructing them, you know, it's just giving them new angles. Yeah, I quite enjoyed that one. I'm sorry I missed it last week, but I'm glad we got to talk about it this week. You have several independent comic books that you want to recommend, mostly of the horror persuasion, although we do have Red Man number four from Sumerian Comics, used to be Behemoth Comics, Matt Frank writing and illustrating this one. This is more of a manga story. I believe it's from the creators from Ultraman. This series has just been straight up action-packed fun. This issue is a perfect example of, hey, James Tynan, Brian Bendis, 
anyone in the X office. You don't need a massive amount of dialogue to tell a story. If you have, if you have a great artist, that's, that's pretty much all you need. And that's what you get with this. This artist it sold, told the story with no dialogue. It's action-packed, hysterical, well-paced. When you're able to draw these characters, these creatures with emotions, you're able to come across what the motivations are with that. You don't need dialogue. It works perfectly. And I've got to give this the, the highest it recommends. This was like, I think my book of the week. It is going to be hard to find. I understand that. But if you can find this, do see it, do pick it up. You will not regret it. Definitely peek inside there and see what's going on with uh, Red Man. We've also got Pentagram of Four, number five from Scout Comics. Marco Fontanelli, I, is this the end of the road? I think this is the final issue. This issue, more than any other, you really do see just how the evil of how evil humans can be. What is the one hell that you would never want to go through imaginable as a human? This is a comic where you have to read it, take it, just read out loud like what, what is happening on the page. Then you get to the end of it, it's like, this was a hell I never want to experience in my life. It is a terrific horror story. And I really, truly believe Marco Fontanelli is a future superstar in the making. Do not sleep on this series. Do not sleep on this guy. He is going places. Yeah, Pentagram of Horror is, has been a fantastic read. Like we mentioned, that's the end of the road. So if you want to pick this one up, likely be out in trades in the not too distant future. You're also recommending Turbo Kid Skeletron Unleashed number one, also from Sumerian Comics. This has got, I think, three writers on it along with the artist. So a lot of people contributing to this comic book. This issue was just wild and crazy. It's got an 1980s indies Rebel Studio, Tim Vigil, Ed Piscor, Red Room vibe written all over it. And I love that stuff. This is just, it's a kick-ass, action-packed, and violent comic. And uh, it's an apocalyptic landscape where a man, Skeletron, is fighting and de decapitating warriors and cannibals. And he comes across a young girl, and she's smitten with him, but things may not turn out too well for her. Uh, I cannot recommend this enough. It was really good and a very surprising read, very fast-paced. Yeah, if you can't, it's another one. If you can find it, do pick it up. Those are our indie comic book recommendations for the week. Definitely go out there and see if you can find some of those hidden gems that are waiting to be discovered. Now let's go over the big two. We've only got one recommendation from Marvel Comics. I'm recommending Ant-Man number three, Al Ewing and Tom Riley. This is the big celebration of the Ant-Man character now that we're on his anniversary. And we finally get to Scott Lang of this story, and some things are kind of finally coming together. The Avengers need Scott Lang to kind of uh, get rid of the Hank Pym stuff. Go hide it somewhere because bad things are afoot. I think for modern readers, this might be too fast-paced for them. But I think it was a breath of fresh air to actually get a story that was compelling. Glad that we got to this point, and I'm quite enjoying the series. I've been flipping flop, flipping and flopping on this series. There have been issues I have liked, issues I haven't. Like I really loved issue two when we got the, the Eric O'Grady, the irredeemable Ant-Man. I, I had a lot of fun reading that. That was terrific. And, and story and dialogue and art, that was fantastic. But yeah, this was all right. Yeah, Scott Lang and his daughter show up in this. And I'm not the biggest Scott Lang daughter fan. It is what it is. It's all, it's all right. I mean, compared to what we got from Marvel this week, it, it's not bad. But if you're an Ant-Man fan, Scott Lang fan, you should enjoy this. Al Ewing definitely has a good voice for Scott Lang. If you like the character, I think you're going to like that interpretation of him. Let's go over to DC Comics. Now, last week, DC had a hell of a week. They had so much stuff that was really good to read. Not quite as good this week, but we definitely have a couple more DC to talk about besides just Detective Comics. Sergeant Rock versus the Army of the Dead, number one. Bruce Campbell, Eduardo Rizzo. Bruce Campbell, obviously, of Evil Dead, Army of Darkness fame. Longtime collaborator of Sam Raimi. I didn't read this because I didn't know if Bruce Campbell was a comic book writer, but it sounds like I missed out. The dialogue of Bruce Campbell in this, Ed Russo's art, uh, everything is, I want to say perfect, but it's practically pitch perfect. It fits the story so well. You're telling a zombie story like this in World War II. So yes, we have Nazis are making zombies from corpses since they're running low on everything. And Easy Company with Sergeant Rock, they, they've been assigned to find the zombie factory, the scientist um, who's doing this, who's actually based on Hitler's real life physician. They got to find out where the dead are being, why they're being reanimated, where, and uh, they got to shut it all down as well as take out the zombies. And things don't look like it's going to be easy for Easy Company. And uh, yeah, it's just a fun setup issue. If you like horror in the DC Comics universe, and maybe you just don't like zombies so much, but you like vampires, DC versus vampires, number nine, James Tynan, Matthew Rosenberg, Otto Schmidt. This is one of the fun little side things that you can read in the DC Comics universe if you're not enjoying the canon. And it's a fun, exciting story. Obviously, they're taking liberties with the characters. 
weird things are happening, but we're still getting some pretty good character moments, which I think really keeps the story invigorating and kind of keeps you locked into what's happening. When you compare this DC versus vampires and the spinoffs of this compared to Dark Crisis on Infinite Multi-Earth's Final Crises Secret Wars, this is so much better than that because I actually care about this. I understand the stakes. There are actual consequences in this story. It's so fast paced and there's action. There's actual action in this miniseries. With the opening of this issue with, with Green Arrow, so badass. I loved it. He's an absolute badass in this story and I loved it. It's perfect. It's been so long since, since we've gotten that. So this is like a, a three part story. We follow our survivors of this apocalypse in Smallville, Gotham and Australia. Some are faring better than others. We get great fights, sacrifices are made, and so some of our heroes go down easily while others are just hard to kill, like Green Arrow. I love it. Fortunately, at the end, it looks like a group of heroes may get some help from a very unlikely source. One, Another one of my strongest recommends from DC. This is the event at DC Comics, DC versus Vampires. If you want to read a, a good, well-written event, read this. If you're a Green Arrow fan, there isn't much for you to chew on these days, but if you're looking for a good version of Green Arrow, Definitely get DC versus Vampires. He's like the main event in that one. He's the big leading character, and we don't see that very often with Oliver Queen in DC Comics these days. I do want to say thank you very much to Drew. Do you have any final words? Yes, uh, a couple things. One, uh, if you didn't go to your local LCS, get Born of Blood, please do. I, I strongly encourage you to read it. It's got some great reviews. And if you're going to be in New York uh, next week, New York Comic Con is next week. We're going to have plenty of exclusives. We've got Born of Blood exclusives right here. We've got the Ryan Brown. we got the debut of the Legends imprint with uh, Aaron Sparrow and uh, Jesse Snyder, the project they're working on with Guns and Angels. you got Death Rage by Don McTague. A ton of stuff at the Comics Elite, Merc booth, and the Legends booth. Please check us out, guys. Had a great time talking about all the wonderful comic books that we got to read this week. If you're visiting the channel for the first time and maybe you want to see what else I've put out there, I've actually got over 2,000 videos, but this is the one that YouTube decided was perfect for you. Definitely check this out if you want some more Thinking Critical YouTube.